Hello there guys, Aaron Chana here for Forever Football, your Donks Rovers content daily. We've got some big, big news in this DRSC daily report. Lots of transfer stuff to come on, Ben Whiteman, Andy Butler, all coming up. But first we start off with the big news, the FA Cup. We've got West Ham United in round four at the end of January, in the last week of January, last week or two of January. And then if we get past West Ham, who beat Stockport 1-0 tonight, as I'm recording this, but it's been released in the morning. Um, if we beat West Ham, if we overcome West Ham and VAR, don't forget it's the first match uh, we've played against West Ham since 2012 and the first match we've ever competed with VAR in. If we overcome all of that and beat West Ham we've got in round 5 either Old Trafford or Anfield Manchester United or at Liverpool in round 5 one step between us and getting as far as any uh, any other year in the FA Cup in this club's history first we've been to round 5 if we get past West Ham and then Manuel Liverpool we are going further than we've ever done in our club's history it's a tough one. It's a really tough one. I would have liked Stockport in my opinion because no disrespect to Stockport. I think they're a great club, good club on the rise, former football league club, went down the divisions in the non-league, came back up. They're a brilliant club, well managed, well run and you know, I, in my personally, no disrespect to them but I would have preferred them because I think they are an easier tie in my opinion but they did defend really, really well up until that one goal from West Ham. But you know what? West Ham will still be a very, very tough challenge. An even tougher challenge than Stockport. And, you know, David Moyes, I'm sure, you know, he's going to try and uh, tacticalise a plan. Hopefully, Darren Moore will overcome the David Moyes tactic and we can absolutely break them down. No doubt we'll see a few of their sort of first team, second team players. Declan Rice, Craig Dawson, and maybe Yarmolenko will start. Maybe we'll get some feature from Ben Rama, Lanzini, Fornells, mate Vici maybe. Um, Mark Noble could captain the side. We'll have to see with this one, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, this is definitely going to be a hammering, pardon the pun. But... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm excited because if we get past this, we've got that dream big Premier League club tie with Man United or Liverpool. And I swear to God, I don't mind who it is as long as we get that fixture because Manuel Liverpool are going to be fantastic opposition for us. I will do a separate video on the last time we faced Man United and Liverpool in different competitions and things like that, uh, excluding friendlies. Because uh, apart from, you know, including friendlies, the last time we played Man United was 2008, and that was a pre-season tour friendly uh, when we were playing against United in 08. So, you know, overall, there's a lot of history surrounding the potential of round five if we get past West Ham in round four. And I think on the evidence from the Stockport game, Stockport held their own against West Ham up until that one goal. And West Ham definitely had controlling parts in some parts of the game. And I think overall, West Ham definitely deserve the credit for the win. But I think they're there to be got at. And I think we've got the attacking players to hopefully do that. Uh, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get past West Ham, get into round five, get the dream tie, and let's go for it. As my duty, let's report on the other round four ties and the round five ties that will come from that. Uh, so as well as West Ham versus Doncaster, we've got Bournemouth versus Crawley. I'm going with Crawley on this one. Uh, screw it, let's go, Harlem Globetrotters. Uh, Swansea versus Nottingham Forest. I'm going to go with Nottingham Forest on this one, just. Man United Liverpool. I, I, I'm I thinking Man United's going to wedge this one. Uh, Southampton or Shrewsbury, of course, that tie postponed due to COVID. That will be uh, played uh, with that. Uh, they will face, winner of that game between, South, between the Saints and Shrewsbury will face Arsenal. Barnsley versus Norwich, Chorley against Wolves. That's a big, big gap and a big, big clash. Millwall versus Bristol City, Brighton versus Blackpool. Good test there for Blackpool, another Premier League side. Wickham v Tottenham, great test for Wickham. Uh, Fulham versus Burnley, Sheffield United versus Plymouth, Chelsea Luton, Brentford Leicester, and Everton Sheffield Wednesday. Now, how they line up for round five? Of course, we know that if we beat West Ham, we face Man United or Liverpool, whoever wins that match. The winner of Fulham versus Burnley faces the winner of Bournemouth versus Crawley Town. The winner of Sheffield United versus Plymouth faces the winner of Millwall versus Bristol City. The winner of Chorley versus Wolves faces Southampton slash Shrewsbury or Arsenal. The winner of Barnsley v Norwich faces the winner of Chelsea versus Luton. 
The winner of Everton versus Chef Wednesday faced the winner of Wickham Spurs. The winner of Swansea Nottingham Forest faced the winner of Cheltenham Town Man City. And the winner of Brentford Leicester faced the winner of Brighton and Blackpool. So big, big clashes going into round five. And that could make for a very tasty quarterfinal. Still a couple of, still a few um, sort of beyond the championship teams. League one, league two, non-league still in there with Chorley. And, you know, there's still a lot of, you know, potential upset and giant killing going on in the FA Cup. If we can get past West Ham, Chorley gets past Wolves. Uh, Cheltenham through Man City. It's going to be crazy to see what happens. Uh, obviously, the next ties are going to be in the next week. Uh, next next week, you know, we've got this week, then we've got next week. So we've got Swindon uh, at the weekend, and then we've got um, the West Ham tie next week. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see what happens with the club over these next 14 days to see exactly what's going to go on. Um... Leading into this game. But I tell you something now. West Ham will be a tough challenge. But I've got no doubt that we can dare to dream and go for it. In more we trust. It is the first game with VAR that we've been involved in. In the club's history. Take with it what you will. We'll see what happens. If they're showing the game, thank God. If not, I'll have to search for a site that isn't available on the usual net. And, um, no, I'm joking, of course. Um, if it's, I'll, I'll find a way to watch it. But I'll tell you something now. I cannot wait. For this game. I really can't wait. This makes it bigger than the return to league action against Swindon this weekend. Makes it so much bigger. Um, but every game is important. And that's the mentality that Darren Moore's got into this side. So we'll see what happens with all of that. Now talking about some other news. Stepping away from the FA Cup just for a bit for the end of the video. Let's talk about some transfer activity. Uh, over the last few hours. After we uploaded the daily reports from uh, today when I'm recording this. But of course it would be yesterday when you guys see the upload from this. Um, again, Ross Armstrong on Twitter, the Scot, um, it says, doesn't look good for Preston North End now, pretty sure Doncaster will push towards QPR now, because obviously they're getting more money from them, but we'll see, won't we? And he's actually said that QPR have bid £3 million for Whiteman, which is more than Preston North End have offered. I'm not believing for a second that's £3 million. If it is, then my God, not only have QPR won the lottery, but we've got a value that we can invest into the future of the squad. New contracts, Sims on a better deal to the end of the season, and then maybe a permanent deal, or maybe cashing on Sims in January with the money. Uh, some of the money will go towards the club, obviously, to keep it afloat, and etc., and keep them away from trouble again. Uh, you know, we weren't really in much danger, to be honest. You know, we weren't in administration trouble. You know, we just needed something to help keep us afloat. Maybe the cell will help it. And to be fair, some people have replied to me on Twitter about my thoughts on all of this. And you know what? I sort of think about it now and think, you know what? This has gone on too long now. His head's been turned clearly. And you know what? I think that Wyman just needs to go. You've done your best. Thank you very much for your services. Goodbye. Um, finally, uh, Liam Hoden on Twitter did a reply. And the reply was talking about contract situations. And one of the big sentences to take out of it, they mentioned Anderson's contract in 2022 ending, so we knew about that already. Coppinger retiring, we knew about that already. Let's end him on a high. Come on, let's end Coppinger's last season on a high with promotion. Uh, but the big sentence to take out of it, expect positive news on Andy Butler this week. So my best guess is that he's, his contract will be extended till the end of the season. Maybe he'll become a coach, a part-time coach in the Rovers setup, as well as the permanent Bells manager uh, still. And you know what? I think extending his playing contract to the end of the season, I'll take that because he's been an absolute rock in that defence when Joe Wright's been injured. He's come in, he's shown exactly what he's got. Age isn't a number for Randy Butler. He's a complete brick wall in that defence with, with the what looks to be the new captain, Tom Anderson, when Ben Whiteman eventually gets the sell. And um, you know what? I think that overall, ben, uh, uh, Andy Butler deserves the brand new contract. 110% he deserves the new brand new contract. It's not even mathematically possible with the percentage rate that he deserves the brand new contract. That's how much I rate Andy Butler. Um, but there we go, guys. So not the biggest daily reports of the day. Uh, there may be more news to come over, to, over tomorrow, which is not when I'm recording this. I'm recording this the night before. Bit confusing for me, I know. But I thought I'd record this now and get it ready now, ready for upload when you guys are seeing it in the tomorrow. 
Uh, but for now, guys, thank you very, very much. Stay tuned for more content. We're going to get some brilliant content coming on the channel. More daily reports. Preview for Swindon on Friday. Watch along stream. You guys can be a part of that. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Cut that case bell so you never miss another video. Go into the description where you can find my links to Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. It's all there. You can follow me on all social medias. Um, if you want to be involved in the stream, stay tuned for the watch alongs. Obviously, they'll they'll kick off about an hour, half an hour before. About 15, 20 minutes usually before the team news comes out. That's when we usually start the watch alongs now. So stay tuned for the Swindon watch along. Obviously, we'll have more watch alongs, including league games, the West Ham FA Cup match. We'll be watching, we'll be watching along with that one. And uh, there we go. Thank you very much, guys. My name is Aaron Chandler from Forever Football. And that, my friends, is full time.